Good morning, school. Good morning, sir. Um, thanks very much to um, the administration of Vine Memorial. Of course, um, like your teacher said, we are um, from the National Commission for Democracy. We were established in 1994, but in 96 we were upgraded to a statutory body. And um, we were established to foster what you call constitutional democracy through the vehicle of raising civic consciousness in the context of um, the promotion and consolidation of democratic good governance. For today's program, I am here to do a presentation on what we've titled Enhancing the Right Civic Culture in Sierra Leone. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to answer the following questions. Yes, sir. Number one, what is civic culture? Number two, do we as a nation have a, the right civic culture? Number three, what should be contained in that right civic culture? And number four, we're going to look at um, the institutions that um, enhance that civic culture. And we'll also answer the question, how to enhance that civic culture. And we will look at other, a few examples from other countries, what we can learn from them. And then we'll end with the benefits of having the right civic culture. So let's start without delay. The first question, what is civic culture? Based on um, our research, we've said it is characterized by acceptance of the authority of the state and belief in participation in civic duties. We said that civic culture is synonymous with political culture. Here, it is about the relationship between those that are the governors, those that are in governance, and us who are the, who are the governed. And um, we've identified three types of civic culture. Number one, we we'll call it the parochial civic culture. Number two, we talk about the subject civic culture. And number three, we we'll talk about the participant civic culture. So with those three basic types, we want to go to the question, do we as a nation have a civic culture, whether it is parochial, whether it is subject or participant. Now, looking at the way our country is, some people have said that we can talk about the first two. In other words, that we have what we call a parochial civic culture and what you might call a subject civic culture. And there is a serious challenge in and which is the best and which is the one that we should aspire towards. But as it stands, because of our attitude towards the governance of the state, most of the time we're not interested in what the country is doing, in what is happening in the state. So we say it is um, parochial. And for the few that are interested in what is happening in the governance of the state, they don't ask questions. They don't participate. They're not interested. They, in fact, they see those that are in governance as masters. They see those in governance as laws, so they don't question the authority. But as a nation, what we should as aspire towards is what we call the participant civic culture. Shortly, we're going to describe what it entails, so that um, wherever we find ourselves, whether in the school or outside of the school, we too can be involved in the right civic culture, which is the participant civic culture. Okay. Now, let, let's, let's look at what should be contained in this right civic culture. So that as a nation, all of us can be part of what is happening, even in terms of development of the state. When we talk about um, civic culture, we look at several variables from which we take um, those values that we must partake of, those values that we must exhibit to ensure that... Um, we are uh, described as having the right um, civic culture. For instance, we should, we should be talking about the right peace culture. Do we have a culture of peace in Sierra Leone? 
we should be talking about the right political culture. Do we have the right political culture in Sierra Leone? We should be talking about the right democratic culture. We should also be talking about the right electoral or voter culture. We should be talking about the right human rights culture. We should be also be talking about the right development culture and even the right gender culture. Now, in all of this, we can break them down into the following, even as we talk about the right civic culture. We must maintain the right attitude here in school. As you look at yourself as an individual, are you maintaining the right attitude in everything that you do? Also, we are talking about upholding the principles of nonviolence. Are you that student that will always fight? And you should not be fighting. In fact, you should ensure that there is a peaceful society. We should ensure mutual respect and tolerance. That is one area where there is so much problem in the country. We don't have mutual respect. In other words, we don't respect each other. We don't tolerate each other. If you belong to one group and I belong to another group, we think it's, it's enough reason for us to fight. But we are saying if we are to enhance the right civic culture in Sierra Leone, we must have mutual respect and tolerance for each other. Also, we must obey law and order. If Sierra Leone is to succeed, we must realize that there, we have law and order in the country. And therefore, we must do our best to maintain law and order wherever we find ourselves. And we must foster what we call transparency, accountability, integrity, and we must avoid greed. Most people are greedy. They want everything for themselves and nothing for the other person. So if, if, if we are talking about the right civic culture, we must not only foster transparency, accountability and integrity, we must avoid greed. And also, we must make society and government very responsive. When there are needs to be met, those that are supposed to meet those needs should be ready to meet them. And they should meet them with the right attitude. We must also uphold the rule of law in every sphere of the state. Don't look at one set of people and say, no, the law does not apply to them. It is just to this one, this, this other category. The law must apply equally across the board for everybody. We must respect the human rights of others. As human beings, we have what we call human rights and we have individual freedoms. We must learn to respect them. We must ensure what we call inclusive governance and we must ex exemplify what we call consensus building. We must acknowledge our responsibilities to the state. Are you aware that as a, as a certain age, you, you must pay taxes? Yes. Okay, I like that. So we must, we must own up to our responsibilities to the state. There are several things that we must do. But we must also foster what we call the responsible use of our spaces, whether public or private. People do things anyhow. It is my right. No. In a democracy, you must use whatever right you have responsibly. And we must popularize what we call volunteerism. And we must engage in self-help initiatives. You see the, 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 the Foster Today Clinic program? That is what fosters what we call voluntarism and self-help initiative. And there are several in your community and even in your school. You look around, you say, well, this is not right. Let's see what we can do to fix it. You can all be involved. Are we together? Yes. Is somebody understand what I'm saying? Yes, okay. We must also ensure equity and foster what we call non-discrimination. We must foster the right work ethics. And it is now that you must start that. When you go to the office, it, become, it becomes easy. When you are given work to do in class, you know that it is time bound. You spend time, you focus attention on that. When it is from this level and move to the next level and even go to the workforce, you can have the right work um, ethics. And also we are saying we must learn to keep our community clean. And we must also foster what we call personal hygiene. We must avoid hate speech. 
Don't say something negative about the other person. Make sure whatever you say, it is uplifting. You can encourage the other person to become a better person. But don't be the person to condemn the other person. Are we together? Yes. Are you lying anything at all? Okay? So we must, we must also rise above what we call ethnic, tribal, and regional sentiment. As you are here in the school, you come from different backgrounds. We have here um, Creoles, we have Mendes, we have Timnis, Locos, etc. We must all come together and live peaceably as a nation. And uh, we must uphold what we call the national pride. You see, if you look here, there, there is the national flag. This is part of our national, national pride. We, we, we sing the national anthem every now and then. All of these are things that we must pay attention to because they help us to become um, what we're supposed to be in terms of enhancing the right civic culture. Yes. Now, these are the basic elements. The list is not exhaustive. But let's briefly mention those institutions that um, enhance the right civic culture in the country. The number one institution is the family. That is where we all started. At home, our parents, they teach us a few things. They train us to live, to, to, to be good citizens. We must ensure we adhere to what our parents are saying at home. And you are now in the learning institution. There, they also foster certain values. They teach you the right, the right um, things to do. So the school is also part of um, the arrangement. We also have state institutions that do this work. And that is why we are here this morning from the National Commission for Democracy because it is part of our work to enhance the right civic culture. But recently, government has also established another institution that is called the National Council for Civic Education and Development. We all work together. But we also have civil society organizations that are also doing the same work. So all of these institutions, the family, the, 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 the school, the religious institution, the state institution, CSOs, we must all work together to foster and enhance the right civic culture. And how do we do it? At NCD, we have identified two approaches. And this is what we are doing now is one of the approaches, the non-formal aspect. We've come to talk to you. We, we, we've put together a non-formal civic education curriculum and we'll be rolling that out. We are moving across to different schools, to different communities. And that is one approach. But the second approach is to ensure that it is integrated into the main syllabus, into the main curriculum. Sometime back, we used to have civics in schools, yes. but it was taken away. But now government has uh, made some efforts to restore it, even though it is still social studies and civics. We at NCD, we are still calling for a standalone civic education course, because that is how we can enhance the right civic culture. We can learn from other countries what they have done. When we look at what obtains, for those of us who are uh, um, reading and those of us who listen to the news, we know that in countries like the US, countries like the, like the UK, they ensure that there is a right relationship between the governors and the governed. And they understand what it means to engage in civic duties. So we can learn from those other countries. And we can learn even from countries across uh, um, the continent of Africa. But as, 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 as a nation also, we must make conscious efforts to ensure that we imbibe the right civic culture for several reasons. And what are these reasons? And that is where we're going to end today. Number one, if we have the right civic culture, it provides the foundation for us becoming good citizens. Are there good citizens in this place? Okay? So the, the right civic culture provides you with the opportunity to become a good citizen. It also provides us with what we call having a heightened sense of civic consciousness. You know what to do in terms of others. You know what to do in your school. You know what to do the right thing, like I was talking about the right attitude. Also, it provides the atmosphere for peace and stability. With the, with the right civic culture, we are not going to fight each other. We're not going to be involved in violence like we, we had recently. It was also a female school. But when they went to the stadium, what happened? The stadium was turned upside down. But I know that will not be said about Vine Memorial. Yes! 
okay? And we must also know that when we learn the right civic culture, it provides for us an assurance of what we call the dividends of democracy. Democracy is not just practice for the sake of democracy. It is practice because we want to see certain results. Good schools, good roads, good health facility, everything that will ensure that life is easy for us. Are we together? We also want to say that it provides assurance of the efficient running of the public and private sectors in the states. That is, it ensures efficient service delivery. Wherever we go, we're not going to be bothered or uh, um, experience strain in terms of um, receiving service from state institutions. But when, when we don't have the right civic culture, we might have problems in those areas. Added to that, we are saying having the right civic culture, it facilitates the promotion and consolidation of democratic good governance. Also, it resolves what we call the tension between popular control. Are we together? Are we together? Yes, we are almost done. It resolves the tension within democracy between popular control and effective governance. There are so many things that are happening. But when we have the right civic culture, we maintain the right balance. And it puts the citizens in the middle of the governance of the state. In other words, you and I are involved. You and I must be involved in the governance of the state. And finally, we say it ensures the right balance. The right balance is maintained between rights. We must ensure the right balance. But it comes with what? Ensuring that we have the right civic culture in our country. In those who are leading us and those of us that are being led, and we must have the right attitude towards civic duties. Are there good citizens in this place? Yeah. Take the message out to your colleagues. Take the message to your, 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 your parents. Take the message to your friends. Take the message to the, to the communities. And take the message across the nation. God bless you. The chairman of um, the National Commission for Democracy, the commissioners and the rest of the staff. It is my honor and privilege to present these uh, materials to the school through the acting principal, Mr. McCarthy.